Hello, this is a short presentation that introduces our work. Can anybody help me using community help desk call records to examine the impact on digital divides during a global pandemic? This is work is done by myself, Jacob Beal, along with Rasta Farzan, Ingfang Zhao, and we are all from the School of Computing and Information at the University of Pittsburgh. This work is motivated and situated within the challenges created by the response and mitigation strategies related to COVID-19. Specifically, it focuses on dramatic shifts in education, healthcare, and social services. It is within these services that we observe remarkable actions in the United States that included transitions to virtual learning, telehealth, and remote social services. The transitions to forced digital services were unfamiliar and uncomfortable to many. This created new or increased digital barriers to basic services. This work is situated within that context. We examine the call records produced by volunteers and staff at the University of Pittsburgh's Community Help Desk. This is a service that Pitt opened for the broader community to help with digital transitions during the COVID struggles. In total, we collected 302 call records from April 30th to October 23rd, 2020. This data was both relevant and broad, collected at the height of the initial pandemic response and represented callers from across 26 organizations. Since the data came from Pittsburgh, it's important to have some understanding of the city. Pittsburgh is in the American Rust Belt, a city of about 300,000 within a larger metro space. Compared to national baselines, Pittsburgh is below average in overall household income and has higher rates of poverty. We performed qualitative thematic analysis of the call records. This process was two-phased. It started with open coding by two students who coded 100 random calls each. These students collaboratively reviewed and developed labels and an eventual codebook. We then performed independent dichotomous coding. This resulted in a Kappa score of 0.4. Through discussions, that Kappa score was raised to 0.73. A third tie-breaking coder was used to bring total agreement. The analysis of the data resulted in five key findings. Each are discussed in detail in the paper. For this presentation, I will dive into two of these findings. The co-occurrence network, shown in this slide, allowed us to identify important patterns in the data. The network represents key nodes in our codebook and the relationship between the nodes. In the figure, the edges represent when two nodes appeared in the same call together. The thickness of edges represent the degree of co-occurrence of two nodes in our data, normalized by the likelihood of overall occurrence. Circles marked as one show a lack of specific literacy can be connected to specific types of issues. For example, lack of hardware literacy can be highly connected to hardware failures in getting a device to work. Circle 2 shows elderly users are frequently in the role of caregiving and can particularly face issues in understanding the task. Circle 3 shows external organizational issues are not co-occurring with literacy or technical issues. Circle 4 shows help seekers identified with female pronouns are most prominent in our data and they reached out to solve a number of different issues. The co-occurrences highlight the complexity of the informational and technical ecosystem that Pittsburgh citizens had to navigate. Specifically, 54% of the calls involve dependency on third-party organizations. This can be, for example, a school providing a student laptop. These organizations often did not have any coordination, formal or informal, with the help desk. These calls were least likely to be resolved, with only a 7% resolution rate. The diversity of information sources often led to confusion by callers on which organization is appropriate to contact. This fragmentation of interdependent, unresolved issues were compounded by a lack of technical efficacy as these users struggled to understand the relationship and order of dependencies. Local organizations wanted to respond quickly. This resulted in selecting technology that was available, but was not ideal or preferred by the users and organizations. Users often had no experience or understanding of the applications and services these devices were capable of providing. 
The urgency of the situation overlooked users' existing context, specifically the familiarity with technology they already possessed, their current technology-driven practices, and their technology-related support network. The totality of our findings led to four implications. We focus on two in this presentation, referring viewers to the paper for complete details of all four implications. The help desk was staffed from an organization which is part of a broader regional society. It was not composed of volunteers familiar with the organizations and entities providing services within specific neighborhood communities. Yet it was issues at the hyper-local level that dominated the call data. Future tools tailored to bridge digital divides must be designed with intention to build community capacity. This includes mechanisms to allow for more entities that can already make long-term neighborhood investments to participate, even if it's in a supporting role, with services offered by external organizations. A simple example of such a mechanism could be functionality to allow for multilingual community members to help facilitate overcoming language barriers between caller and help provider. It is clear that future solutions that seek to bridge digital divides created by hyper-digitization of education and social services will be highly leveraged by the family member who fulfills the primary family support role, which in our analysis shows are primarily women. Future tools could assist this constituency in two important ways. First, tools should assist help seekers in finding technical solutions while also helping them navigate the different organizations that are involved in the distribution and use of these technologies. Second, given the need to involve multiple stakeholders, tools should support asynchronous and episodic interaction. This would allow those tasked with primary family support to better integrate help seeking into multitasking living situations. These contributions are not absent limitations. The data analysis and resulting implications are all based on a single geographic region within a single Western country. Our study also focused on the interactions and exchanges between help seeker and help providing volunteer. The current work does not take into account perspectives of many stakeholders that are a part of the broader ecosystem. The perspective of help seekers is especially missing in this methodology. Finally, we would like to thank Pitt IT for providing the call records, and we thank the National Science Foundation for their support of this work.